Yes, good evening, guys, ladies and gentlemen, across the board, across the world. I just did the uh, the video, a part two, a uh, two-part video of uh, requests from the Twitter community. We had roughly 50, went through them all in, in two parts, gold and silver miners, uh, uranium miners mostly. Um, and yeah, check it out. It will be released in, I don't know, two hours, three hours time. Uh, they were a bit long and a bit heavy to upload. So check them out. I had fun doing them. I definitely will do similar once again in the future. That is for sure. For this video, it will be a pure uranium video looking at only ratios uh, where we look at the miners, some miners in relation to the spot price. So where are we in time? Many miners looks absolutely gorgeous right now, breaking out of big, big patterns. And, um, but the most important time of at least one thing that is very important is where is it in relation to its commodity, in this case, uranium. So let's dive in. As always, like, subscribe, do your thing. If you find what I do that gives any value, I would highly recommend or hope that you give me a sub or whatever you want to do. Thumbs up. It's all up to you. So I have found roughly 15. Again, I, I could I could have could have picked more. Uh, I found something in the US and some in the uh, Australian markets. Uh, again, I couldn't pick them all because that would be a very, very long video. So, forces, metals, quite simply, quite simply. Well, nothing, nothing is simple, but anyway, this is the golden trend line that we broke. Uh, you know, late, this, uh, late 2020, huge move up here, retest, deep retest below, and uh, going to the weekly to get a bit more detail. Breakout again here, bullish. Uh, it both like there, and now we're trying to break higher, really. And uh, the big support and resistance zone is right here. The red one right there. You can see so many interactions coming across all over. It really is quite well defined. So I think forces metals is really having a good go here. Whole flag, it wants to resume higher. When we clear that level there, I think forces metals will in will be in for a big move. Again, the chart looks really good, but this looks even way more prime. If this was a stock, an individual stock of anything, I would be insanely bullish on that stock, no matter the sector, no matter what where it comes from. If we can clear that, that would be some beautiful, beautiful. Also a bit of a skewed inward head to shoulders there, but definitely. I really like the ratio for forces metals. Go look at the chart as well. It also looks really, really good. If we can go here, that will be go for launch, as many of the people say. Um, and I think we would actually go up to the 2021 high right there. Denison Mines, also quite similar. Looks really good as we speak. Not, not as good as some of them, but it's still a very well-defined clean chart in my view. And again, late 2020, we broke that. At that point in time, we had that formation coming all the way up to the top over here. Boop, beautiful, beautiful um, tick right there. And now ever since we are in this bull flag right here. Um, if we go a bit closer, you could argue that we have some sort of green internal support here. If this holds and breaks out, I'm calling that Denison is going to outperform the metal heavily. Uh, it could also be that we're having one more go here, you know, and again, that should be the last move low before we break out. Um, also, as, as mentioned, the miner itself looks really, really good. Again, if this was a stock, I would be very intrigued in this kind of setup here. Um, no doubt about it. So again, also Denison against the commodity itself looks like we really want to make a statement here and that we want to go higher. Um, again, this is on the weekly, so it doesn't happen tomorrow. Laramid, also a smaller stock. Um, but these, actually these types of Formation or this type of formation I see very often across the board. Also, where you have some perfect parallels coming across, defining, you know, the lows and the highs within within this formation. So right now we're actually breaking out of the squeeze here. Beautiful, way into the apex, beautiful bull flagging right there. Again, pointing to that this is just recharging to go higher. Again, Laramid looks also insanely good. I think if I remember correctly, it has broken out of a 15-year-long downtrend um, not so long ago. 
And that bull flag right there looks very primed that it wants to break up higher there. That's at least how I see it. Um, if we go to the daily, can we have a bit more clarity? I think we can. Right, the bull flag, depending on if you can screw it down a bit, maybe, but roughly something like this. That's the bull flag on the daily. Uh, so, yeah, again, I like what I see for this ratio, uh, anyways. Uh, energy fuels, a bit different. It has underperformed big time here um, compared to all the others. Uh, I, th I think it had some sort of, it, it sold something like a few months ago. Maybe that's why people, I don't know what to do with the stock. Um, again, it, against the metal, it doesn't look as good as the others. We're coming down here to that trend line right there. We're actually dipping a bit below here. We want to get back above really quickly. Otherwise, I think we could have a move or a touch of that blue, well-defined uh, bull flag or bullish trend here. And that would be a perfect entry um, in EFR or in energy fuels in this case. And uh, so, yeah, you can also see what I think this is, is capitulation. You don't know how long it will it will last. Oops, excuse me. How long time it will last. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, but anyways, this just red week after red week all the way down in my view. Yep, that's typical end of move type of behavior. We just need to see how low it goes. If we get back above in my view, that should be the end of that. Uh, if we can't, then... There's a great buying opportunity when the ratio hits the blue trend line. I'm thinking mostly that the number one, where we get back above quickly, is possible. Probable where we, what will happen? Find. Uh, weird looking chart, but anyways, looking at find itself is also a bit different compared to the others. It has broken out big time as we speak last week, but quite simply falling wedge right there, and uh, we had a neckline here with that topping pattern there breakdown so yeah when and if we break i think when we break above here i think that is go time really for this one here it could go on for a long time but definitely looking at last week's candle at the lows of the trend line i would be surprised if this would not be some sort of bottom in, in this ratio also while looking at the individual stock here find itself which has broken out big as mentioned big time you can go check it out yourself but the really big moves comes when we break out and we hopefully go higher uh, in this stock right there. EU, Encore Energy, again, bit of a different one. I had some trouble or some difficulties defining this chart, but I found this overall up slow pink squeeze right there. We had a huge breakout, breakout retest all the way up. Zooming in here, we are now in the blue bull flag. Yes, it's a very big bull flag. Hole here, and then a long bull flag. Usually I don't, I prefer them to only be this long, but still, it's going on forever. We came in last week and tagged that lower trend line. If that holds, this one right here, if that holds and we start to curl higher here, that's insanely bullish. However, note this bear flag there. So if we can negate it, hugely bullish. So it is quite a big moment in time for, for this stock here. It's not saying that EU can will go down. It just means that it could actually underperform for some time more, uh, the uranium stock price. Um, so yeah, let's see where it ends up. We did take out that green internal, which was quite, quite nice. However, we didn't see a, a big blast off. We just kept being inside that bull flag, which, uh, excuse me, bear flag, which we broke down here. So I'm very curious to see what happens over the next, actually next week or the, the week after what happens here. Hopefully we start to see some green candles and that means that we could be out of the woods uh, uh, in February for this stock here. Bannerman, go look at the Bannerman chart. Looks insanely, insanely strong. The ratio, long-term horizontal support right there, well-defined, actually more or less perfectly defined across there. And what I'm seeing here is that we're actually now the green lower support right there. I've copied the green to there because I think that has, when and if we get there, I would expect to see some sort of resistance um, at that level. Again, it has to be confirmed. It's just a speculative line at the moment. Looking more closely, red squeeze right there. Huge breakout, retesting the green. What I'm seeing here is actually what could be an inverted head and shoulders in the making. Um, again, 
I have no idea if that will happen. It just looks like something that wants to do something like this. And if that happens and we get and we get back above here, you have higher highs, higher lows, and then you have yet another high. So Bannerman also looks somewhat primed here again. We just need to get above that horizontal level uh, right there. And, and then if we do, I'm more or less 100% sure that that will be, you know, that invert head and shoulders that will be, that will be confirmed at that point in time. So Bannerman here also looks really good. We haven't even taken out any golden trend lines yet. We just took it out on the Bannerman. And when we do on the ratio as well, I mean, you can just imagine what, what could happen if we if we really get these kind of breakouts here, a 15 year long breakout here as well. I mean, Bannerman could be, yeah, fantastic. PDN, so that's Paladin Energy. Uh, again, quite simply not to spend much time on it. Huge pole flag. This one, again, is a textbook, both like in the making at some point in time. Most of the time, it, this one resolves to the upside. We have this horizontal level here, which we are just toying with, oh, excuse me, which we are toying with as we speak. Breakdown for the flag, getting below. And yeah, you can see here, we're toying with that horizontal level. Um, so as, when this breaks out, because often it will, that's when you see Paladin really kick into gear. Um, I cannot do anything with the stuff over here, but anyways, this looks pretty clear to me. Double bottom, you can see it right there, and then we're just both lagging after. So I also like what I see on that chart here. Elevate, again, this stuff here is very difficult to do anything with. Maybe you have some stuff going on there, but what I found, this one here, this one there, we, and then we are just you know grinding here. Again, this looks to me, we are coiling up, both flagging, and then going higher. I would have preferred to have some sort of touch right there to confirm it 100%, that golden. However, that is not the case. We are using, you know, the previous bull cycle highs, the bull cycle highs, and the, uh, the 2021 highs here for for the golden. As said, I would have preferred to have a middle connection to confirm it. Um, but now again, quite uh, same thing again here. Pull flag with a bit of a deeper angle on the on the flag, but it is still okay. Um, Again, we haven't broken out yet, even though Elevate looks really good as well. Um, Boss Energy has actually broken out of its all-time high, if you go and look on the um, on the chart. The big one here has been taken out. The golden bad boy has been taken out in January 2021. And ever since, we've actually gone sideways, more or less, in the ratio. Uh, but this looks to me that either way, we go and tag that blue lower, and then it's you know, we have sideways action here. If we tag it, this one should be one of the biggest lawn patches you can ever see. And we will actually go all the way up here. Um, uh, if that happens, I mean, that's just an, um, an amazing risk reward entry um, at that point in time, looking at a ratio only between boss and uranium miners. Looks insanely good here. Lotus, two lines in my view says it all. Uh, it's actually pretty compelling that this chart here Golden here first, fake out again. We still have the golden here. And then what I did was basically just, I would copy it here, add it on top to see if it makes sense. So roughly around here, I would, it would have been perfect if we didn't have these uh, small you know, wicks there, but it is what it is right there. In my view, this is just primed to just coil and then just boom, go higher. Uh, again, we haven't done it yet, but still these two, this golden band here, when it breaks, that's a game changer for this ratio. Uh, Lotus against the uranium spot price. Uh, Camico, good old Cami. Look at how well defined. Looking back, what twenty years, fifteen years, this is. You know the highs. You know for the ratio is just perfect. Again, confirmed here September twenty twenty three. Internally, it has broken this red support. We should actually make it green. There it is. It has broken. Um, so again. Chemico here again is at at it in its top of its uh, its range. You also I think have a beautiful splitter coming across there, but it, this could actually be um, maybe I'm too bullish. I don't know, but if we don't go lower than here and we start to to move higher, that could actually be the first time in 15 years where we actually break that ratio upper band, and then you will see some just absolutely amazing moves that you haven't seen before in Chemico. Well. That's a big statement, but the moves you will see when you break such a, 
Okay, but in there, you will see heavily, heavily outperformance by Cameco against the uranium spot price. Again, if we for some reason get all the way down here, again, history says you buy Cameco at that point in time. Or at least you're interested in Cameco, looking at Cameco itself to find an entry. Um, but I still think that we could be in for some sort of, uh, you know, different case um, for the first time in a long, long time for Cameco. Uh, and if we do, that will, in my view, also be very telling what this uranium bull market is. And that is that it could be different again for the first time in a long time that we have supply deficit. Uh, the 2008, which is primed by overall, you know, markets going up, but also the uh, chemical uh, MacArthur River getting flooded and you have that uh, uranium spot price or the spot, um, the people were afraid that it, they, that, there was not enough uh, uranium, which clearly there was. However, it didn't stop the miners from having, you know, 50, 10x uh, across the board. UEC, also one that is actually, has done insanely well on the, on the chart itself. The 2010 high in this ratio, I think actually, uh, oh, that could be the 2000, yeah, 2010, Again, 21, and then we had a double top bull flagging here. Again, this to me just screams that this wants to go higher. Um, maybe it needs a bit of a pause here, but as long as we're still, you know, not dropping too far down, uh, this bull flag could also be taking out. You can also know this horizontal line here, very important. So again, if we break it here, could be, then again, that's UVC just, again, completely going to outperform the spot price. Um, so yeah, UVC also looks... Like it wants to do something really good here. Again, it has has it reached all time highs? No, I think very closely. But here it it's even way off the all time highs. You still have what like fifty percent or so still in the bag in the uh, for that one. Cap, I had to look twice at this ratio because cap has done insanely well, but against the spot price it hasn't. I mean, just the amount of value you get here at in 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 Kassadin Prom is just it it amazes me that that. If you look at cap itself, like I said, and from the chart itself, it has done really, really good. But against the ratio, we haven't. So again, buying it down here from a historical point of view, I mean, that's not a bad thing. You can see how well defined it is. You have the lower, the splitter, and the upper, and you're now, you know, all, almost at the at the low side. You are at the lowest point, more or less. You know, within like ten percent or so, give or take, right here. Um, that's just amazing. I will not go and look at the cap because I was, you know, promising myself only to look at the ratio. But Cassandra promised done insanely well. But against spot price, not really. Uh, buying opportunity, question mark, that's totally up to you. But again, from a historical point of speaking, that is not the worst kind of chart in the world. Um, so yeah, that's all I had. Again, I think overall, uranium miners against the spot price, as you know, um, has underperformed. You're looking at the URNM against the uranium spot price. It has also it has also underperformed, but it's breaking out. You know, last week this could be a big move, guys. Again, we have to wait and see the markets. It's it's opening in in one hour. But again, uh, if this is the big move again, uh, twenty and thirty percent drawdowns very quickly is to be expected. Just like we saw in 2006, 2007, uh, it will be a wild ride. Maybe I'm too bullish and that's the reason why we're not going. I'm also I'm always, when I'm very bullish on something, I'm getting, you know, a bit of, uh, I'm getting a bit scared because, yeah, maybe I'm just too too chicken. I don't know. Anyways, miners scans, the, the, the uranium spot price looks really good across the board we haven't even broken out yet so that's just my takeaway from this have a great one guys and please do check out the twitter uh, suggestions videos that is coming out in two hours time thank you guys bye bye bye